Guys, I, I wanted to play this uh, soundbite from you from Brad Holmes because I actually, my radar antennas went up when I heard this, and I was a little bit, I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't a little bit concerned. I want to play it for you. This is Brad Holmes talking about Jameson Williams, and you tell me what you think. I'll tell you what I think after this. Here it is. Well, obviously, we're expecting big things. Um, you know, I guess that's a good way to put it. You know, it's kind of like a brand new first round pick um you know the goal when we originally drafted him you know we didn't know really how much we were gonna get out of him but it was good to have him get some kind of game experience to kind of feel the speed of the game but um yeah we're just going to continue to do everything that we need to do to make sure that he's set up to succeed uh jameson also has to hold his part and make sure that he's doing everything that he needs to do so it's always a uh, it's always accountability factor on both sides but we expect big things from him um you know he's got rare talent rare ability um he's got a a serious passion for the game and um yeah we just gotta we expect big things from him but uh obviously we got to do both our parts to make sure he's up to succeed Hmm. I think I know where your antennas went up. My antennas went up. He's got to do his, his part. part. You don't say that if you're comfortable with what he's doing. You know what you say if you're comfortable with his work ethic, if you're comfortable with his progress? You say, this guy has been killing it at the facility. He is going to be coming. Yeah. I can't tell you about how great this kid's work ethic is. I can't tell you how far he's come. I am so excited about Jamison Williams. You don't, you don't say if it's not true. Yeah. Uh, he's got to do his part too, man. We believe in J-Mo. We believe in J-Mo. But he's got to do his part. <laughs> Which... The question, the interviewer in me says, is he not doing his part? Yeah, 100%. I, I didn't like that Brad Holmes said that, but I can understand it. Look, um, when you go through this process of uh, an ACL or a major surgery and you're always at the facility, you're constantly at the facility, your life becomes rehab, as it should be, because you're getting paid handsomely, because the team took a choice on you, because the team is making you a business. That's what you are. You're a walking corporation. But your whole life becomes that. You're waking up at 6 a.m. to get the facility at 6.15. Your treatment all day. You can't go out there and practice with your brothers. Then you come back. Your treatment after practice. Treatment during the meetings. Treatment at night. You know, you're doing exercise. It's just nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. So when he finally got on the field, and this is speculation, by the way. If he finally got on the field, had it scored a touchdown, scored another when he got called back, had some success, saw, like, his knee being good, didn't need the knee brace, he's excited in off seasons. Man, he's been through a lot as a rookie. He got drafted hurt. So in his offseason, he's like, man, I just want to go back to hang out somewhere or maybe go to Alabama, maybe go to Florida, maybe go do some things, maybe travel a little bit, go see my parents. I want to get away from Detroit a little bit. And that can lead sometimes to the medical staff saying, hey, you know, he missed treatment on Friday. Yeah. You know, he left a little early on Friday to go Florida for the weekend. And, oh, well, he, he was a little late for treatment on Monday. Not saying these things are happening, but whenever you're dealing with an injury, those are some of the things you deal with is set individual kind of having to play keep or keep away from the, the trainers. With that being said, when I went out to Florida, I mean, uh, to California, Ryan, mm -hmm. Maz, to go to my brother's game at the Rose Bowl, shout out to Bailey, all-star game, guess who was on my flight on the way back? James Williams. Because they had the NFL PA thing out there as well. He was saying the same hotel. He, K9, uh, Richard Sherman, a bunch of – we put some of the pictures up there. Jamison Williams was there as well, and he was on my flight back to Detroit. And this was in, uh, in January. So I saw him come back to Detroit. I see that he wants to be here and get ready. So I think Brad might have just said it wrong. But I think he's doing his part. I mean, we saw it on the field. Like, he's going to be fine. Everybody's still worried about the ACL. And he's like, well, we're going to work him in the right way. I just think they need to rip the Band-Aid off of it. I believe that they're – the way that they talk about Jamison Williams to you guys, the fans, mm -hmm. it makes you leery. It makes you nervous. Like he's a little bit of a doll or and something right, like and, that. And rightfully so because the way Brad Holmes talks about him is like, well, we got to yeah, ease him in there. And the way Dan Campbell talks about him, well, when he you know, he could take on a little bit more, we'll do a little bit more. They got to stop talking like he's some 
Cabbage Patch Kid or some precious <laughs> Barbie doll or something. He is a grown man that tore his ACL, not reconstructed knee surgery. He stayed with you. He he rehabbed, got back, and then we saw him on a couple plays last season towards the end of the season where we're like, <coughs> where we're like this guy is going to be good. He can be the genuine article. They got to stop talking about him in such a way that leaves you to question and think and be like, I got to decipher through messages and say, did my antenna just go up now? Was, 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 was that something? They got to stop talking about him like that. Because I guarantee you, tearing my ACL, coming back and saying it, what I saw him do last year in December, the kid's going to be fine. Okay, so now in hindsight, go back to my old, old man uh, yelling at him last year. You're trading up. Yeah. For an injured player, you already took Pascal. After that, we don't even hear about him really. They don't really never say anything about the second round pick. I hear they're very high on Pascal. Okay, that's good. I didn't hear that. I'm glad you heard it. So, in yeah. hindsight, are you people? Are you happy? Are you happy they traded up to get him, or would you have rather them do their thing, chill out, and this year get a guy like? Jackson Smith and Jigba, or uh, what's his name in USC? Oh, Jordan Addison. Jordan Addison. Can I answer that first? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Because they got jumped by right. New Orleans. Didn't New Orleans select Chris Olave? Olave before them? Yeah, he, Chris Olave went 11. Okay. How about Garrett Wilson? Where did he go? 10. Okay, so they couldn't get those mm -hmm. two guys. No. So either trade up to get Jamison Williams or hold your cards and get your receiver maybe this year. So. Here's how I would respond to that. Yes, absolutely, 100% get the player. Because there are only so many home run hitters. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Now, this is all hypothetical. I want right. to make that very clear. I, I think yeah. it's going to be fine. Am I 100% it's going to be fine? No. Am I 95% sure it's going to be fine? Yes. There are only so many home run hitters in every NFL draft. Jamison Williams is one of those home run hitters. Period. End of story. You have to get guys like that. You can't field a championship team by just getting a bunch of good guys. I know a bunch, bunch of guys yeah. are average to good players. You need superstars. Jamison Williams has the potential to be a superstar in the NFL, not on the Lions, a superstar in the NFL. And I just think that it was worth the shot. It absolutely was worth the shot, and I think it will work out. Am I 100% certain it will work out? No, but I'm pretty close. You got to get the talent. You got to get a guy that runs 4-3, like super low 4-3. 4-3 is hard to do, man. And I'm talking about, and once you get to 4-3, there are different levels of 4-3. 4-3 versus 4-4. Four, 4-3. Four. Four, three, what three. the hell's the difference? What Pro Bowl. Hall of, fame. Hall of Fame. Four three versus four Hall four. Hall of Fame. Because you know What's what? That? This 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 much? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, game it's more it's than that. A, it's a game it's, of it's more. It's a little bit more than that. Because you're talking about a guy that <laughs> runs four three three versus a guy that runs four four three. Man, that that guy that runs four three three. He's gonna be on. He's gonna be on fifteen mile on Maple right here. And that guy <laughs> that runs four four three. He's gonna be at that KFC back there. Like, like it's it's that fast wow. and, it's, and it's that big a difference when you're at the line of scrimmage. Also, that four four. Did you get those two chicken wraps yesterday, by the way? Man, look, man, don't stop, stop <laughs> putting my business out there. Stop putting my business out there. My sister was like KFC. I was like, look, man, the chicken wraps came back. No, but also what happens with that is that four four. After three four years, it turns into four five, or after whatever, like it goes fast to the opposite direction. So you know. Him running 4-3 allows him to be at a high level for a very long time. He runs exceptional routes as well. He catches the ball with his hands. You need those elite receivers. Like, he's an elite receiver. He's an elite route runner, and he has elite speed. Like, he, Ohio State gave this man a, a, a scholarship for a reason. Alabama plucked him from Ohio State for a reason. They almost won the national championship with one of the not-so-better uh, Alabama teams in the last 12 years because he was on that team. He's a special individual, man. I think he'll be special for some time. You look at the division now, I mean, I hope you're right. Just, Justin Jefferson's down the street, and we know how good he is. So, got to get the guy that got the guy, and things going to work out for him. Would you do it again, Mass? I enjoyed them moving up and getting in the news and being a national team and, you know, people talking about him. And I love the touchdowns he got. He was, like you said, yeah. he was at 
uh, Hunter House and the, and the defense was at Kentucky Fried Chicken Jared down Goff, the street. And on both those and he touchdowns, almost threw him. there you go. He had to wait for it, the ball. Yeah, Ryan, I, I'm i glad they took him because it really didn't cost them much, did it? I mean, to move up and get it. No. Not essentially. And, and, I mean, after Jordan Davis had an okay year, I mean, if, in that redraft, yeah. he's at the end of the first round. Um, Kyle Hamilton, I believe he tore his ACL. I wouldn't draft that um, Notice whenever they do those mock draft redrafts, Ryan, yeah. Jameson Williams doesn't move. No, he does not move at all. Think about that. Traylon Burks. He only played, what, four games, four or five games. Yeah. He only had a couple catches. He does not move in those redrafts. And he would have been the first guy taken had yeah. he been healthy. Oh, 100%. Jahan Dotson uh, yeah. was the next wide receiver after. I mean, no. I'm glad we have him. Yeah. No doubt. And 100%. I pray for his uh, health. I just like that we have a guy. Like yeah. for, I think for so long, Ryan, tell me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. and I hear the music, so I know we got to go to Very a break. Good. You've been looking at other teams. Damn, I wish we had a player like that. Yeah. Damn, I wish the Lions had a receiver like that. Damn, I wish the Lions had a DB like that. Well, now with him, you don't have to say, damn, I wish we had that, because you got him. No so doubt. I think they made the right That's call. That's why I want Anthony Richardson.